One of the most common methods of constructing a finished composite part is vacuum bagging. We will demonstrate this process by forming a carbon fiber part against this epoxy laminate tool that we created in our earlier video. Although we've chosen to use carbon fiber because of its superior strength to weight ratio, this same method is also compatible with fiberglass. We begin by applying our MIA PS tape around the perimeter of our mold in order to cover the gap between the mold and the mold frame. This pressure sensitive tape will ensure an airtight seal during the vacuum bagging process. Next, we apply our release agents. For this mold, we've chosen a semi permanent release. For more details on this procedure, please watch our other video on sealing and releasing models and molds. Next, we apply our MIA sealant tape. We start applying the tape in the middle of one of the sides rather than at a corner. This way, it will be easier to seal the two ends of the tape together when we are finished. Here is a close up of how we are rounding the corners. Rather than overlapping tape at the corner, which would create a potential vacuum leak problem, we tear just the tape at the corner and carefully create a nice round corner with no cuts or overlapping tape. This method exposes a small bit of the adhesive at the corners, which we cover with small strips of the tape's nonstick backing. Now we're ready to cut our materials. First is the carbon fiber. Although there are many types of carbon fiber, we have chosen a twill weave, which provides an impressive looking appearance to the finished part. Since each strand has a smooth, slippery surface, carbon fiber will move and shift during cutting, making it more difficult to handle than fiberglass cloth. We measure the desired dimensions of our carbon and then pull out one strand leaving a line for our scissors to follow when cutting. This technique will work when cutting both the length and width. Next, we roll out and cut our MIA peel ply. This layer, although not necessary, is very useful when desiring either a satin finish for the finished part or if we plan to do secondary bonding. The nylon will create a rough and very active surface on our part. The next layer is our perforated film, which regulates the flow of excess resin from the part into our bleeder material. The small perforations enable excess resin to be drawn from the reinforcement evenly throughout the part, rather than allowing it to pool in specific areas. This helps us to achieve the ideal ratio of resin to reinforcement throughout the part. Next we cut our bleeder material. This material absorbs and retains the excess resin that is drawn from the part and through the perforated layer. We selected at least two layers to ensure it captures all of the excess resin without completely saturating the material. Now we cut our release film, which prevents resin from crossing into the breather material. Next we cut our breather layers, which is the same material as our bleeder. This layer enables the vacuum to uniformly pass through this fabric and exert consistent and even pressure over the entire laminate. Our final layer is the bagging material, which we cut oversized to allow this material to be sucked down into the cavity created by the contour of our mold. For complete information on the products you've seen here, plus free access to over 30 other videos featuring topics such as silicone rubber mold making, polyurethane casting, building fiberglass laminate molds, forming composite parts, and more, please go to freemansupply.com and visit our extensive video library.